Hey, welcome to Say Nado. Let's go up to the barn garage and see what Victor's into today. <laughs> Look at this, two more of the T-180 chargers. Let's go get them in here in the barn garage and set them up. Some modules are gonna safety timer out no matter what you do. It's I maxed out the safety timers on all four. And four different modules. And you can see this is like 659 minutes with an alarming amount of like 20,900 MAH. And it still won't shut off. It's going to go all the way to the max, like 720 minutes, just like this one, which is on module 26, this one on module 11, and this one on module 12. And this is 11, 12, which is some of the weaker, not the weakest, but nearly the weakest. This is a medium grade cell, and this was one of the stronger cells. I did this as an experiment to see because I've been setting my safety timer at different times. I've been doing some calculations to see how long it should be taking for each charge and discharge of the cycle. I've noticed that some of the stronger modules will take longer than the medium or the weaker modules. And so I've been trying to set a safety timer to where at a reasonable amount, and if it's an unreasonable charge like what's happening over here with this unreasonable 20,951 MAH, which I'm going to stop right now because that's that's ridiculous and dangerous. I don't want the top of that to blow off in my face. For my next cycles, I'm going to be setting my safety timer at like 320 because 200 and something, I was getting a safety timer on almost every module that I, that I did. And when I did my calculations, I should have been able to do 250 minutes, even if the module takes 26 hours to do for three cycles at three amps, 300 minutes should have been enough, but I had a large amount of timeouts, but at 350, I did not, so I'll be doing 320 minutes, and if you don't know how to get to the safety timer and set the safety timer, I'm going to show you. Before I do, I want to show you something else that's very interesting. Uh, this is set Shemp here, her cycle was only 2208 MAH, to discharge 7834 MAH on the charge. This is on module 18. Module 18 is right here. And look at the visible swelling on module 18. Look over here, 26 has been off for a while. If it had any swelling, it's gone down. Look down here at five, which hasn't been on charge for a while now. And then look at this again. Now, can you see the swelling there? I, in case you're curious, my blue tape here is going over some of the weakest modules that I have in this particular pack. And no, that swelling isn't from overheating lack of a fan. I do have a fan over here that it plugs into a 110 outlet. It's it's made by iPower. And it blows more air than the original fan does. And it just happens to slip over the inlet of the original fan and blows more air and is made for blowing continuously. Unlike this fan is made for intermittent use. It looks like a hillbilly setup, and it's, but it's on a half hillbilly because I'm half city boy and half hillbilly. It is very cheap, and the link to it's in the description below the video. And if you wonder, does more cycles improve the capacity of the module? Well, this 18 here, I had already done these three cycles just to assess the module. To try to get an idea and I did that on all the modules to try to get an idea of what their capacity really is and I like to look at the discharge on the third cycle and see how much MAH they can discharge on the third cycle and sometimes that improves from the second cycle usually the first cycle discharge is not very good data because you don't know for sure what 
the charge is in the module until you discharge it and then give it a full charge. So the second cycle is actual data. This is all my opinion now. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not an electronic engineer. Think of this as experimental a learning process. <laughs> the discharge on the third cycle gives me the best idea of the capacity of that module without doing any further cycles or anything else to the module that I theoretically think could improve the module. What I've done with some of the weaker modules is give them further, further cycles to see if there's improvement or not. Whatever, all these cycles right here were cycled down to six volts, 6.00. Then these cycles over here were done down to five and a half volts. And we were getting some improvement here on, let's take the 18 that we were looking at and went from 2041 MAH on the second cycle. Remember the first cycle doesn't count because it probably didn't have a lot of charge in it. Then the third cycle was 2003 MAH. So it would, it would appear to be getting worse with the cycles. And these were cycling down to six volts and then back up to a full charge. So I ran this through three more cycles and on the fourth cycle, which these were done at only two amps, two amps charge and two amps discharge and down to five and a half volts. What I got on number 18 was the discharge was 2208. Compare that to the best discharge on the original cycles at three amps in, three amps out, down to six volts. And we got a, a 2041 and a 2003 in that order. We jumped up 200 MAH to 2208. Then in the fifth cycle, again, this was at two amps in, two amps out, and down to five and a half volts. I got a 3,324 milliamps on the discharge of five. And then on the sixth cycle, 3,329. So there was actually pretty darn good improvement. But then on the charge of that last cycle, it just, it wanted to keep on charging and charging and charging forever. You see, I've got zeros here because I ended up having to stop it because it was up to, come on, focus. Because it went all the way up to 20,955 MAH and was still charging at 661 minutes. This is why I have to set the safety timer back to 320 and just let it shut off so that it won't be doing that to the cell and swelling it out like that. Because who knows what was improving and you see the improvement could be ruined now. This is not to say that all cells are going to improve if you cycle them more and more and more. That's, that is inconclusive. Even if I was to do every one of these 28 and show you the results and it seemed like, you know, the majority of them would improve doing that, that's still not conclusive. I mean, you really have to take like a thousand of these and then do the experiment, not switching from three volts then down to two volts and going from six down to three, but take a thousand of them and do them all at three volts down to six and then another different thousand of them and all the two amps down to 5.5 and so on and so forth and then do another thousand of them with the compound cycling like I just did and even then how do you know the results aren't being skewed by the fact that you've got strong modules and medium modules and weak modules in your test subjects. This is why I urge you to comment below because none of us have the time and money to be experimenting with thousands and thousands of modules. And most of us don't have thousands of modules. And even 
all the cars that I fix, customers cars, my own cars, whatever, I'm not going to do thousands of modules. So we need to be sharing in the comments below and on the St. Auto Facebook page so that everybody can, you know, pool their data and help each other improve in their techniques. Again, just my opinion, just my experiments. I'm not an electronic engineer. I built automatic transmissions for like 25 years. That's my specialty. That's why you can't go through here without tripping on one. Transmission work also pays a lot better than this nonsense. But I like experimenting. I like to share and I like to help people. So there you go. Put some comments in below and help people. Like I said, I've been experimenting with the safety timer. And this one was set at 400 minutes. At 400 minutes, it had already put in 11,643 mAh. Clearly, that's too much. So, like I said, I wanted to back off to 320. Hit escape. And better get your cycle data before you hit escape. Because once you hit escape, all that data is gone. All right. I had it set for one one cycle. I'm going to escape again. You see the NIMH I had it set for. I've got to go over here to setup. Setup. And at the bottom of this first page is where the safety timer is. Hit that and go down. Three twenty. Hit enter, then escape. And keep going. Get back to whoop. Passed it. N I M H. And then I've got to decide which module I'm going to put this on, and whether I'm going to cycle it, charge it, or discharge, and all that kind of stuff. With the Tenergy listing that I'm linked to in the description of this video, where you can find one of these says that this does not do or that at least it says that these are not made to do this which brings me to another point that i should tell you don't do anything you see me do in my videos don't even do anything i talk about in my video i've woke up in the hospital more than a few times wondering why i'm still alive cables it does come with cables lots of different cables but it doesn't come with these cables and these are working out great for doing with this what this ain't supposed to do. Lots more shenanigans like this in a hybrid repair playlist. Lots more stuff about the T180 in the hybrid repair playlist as well. Hey, if you like this video, we've got a whole lot more. We've got tool reviews, we've got repair videos, we've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Stain Auto. Watch, Stain Auto. Stain Auto. Stain Auto. What?